Hi, welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks in PyTorch with Washington University. In this part, we're going to take a look at dictionaries and lists in Python. We're building some of the Python preliminaries before we get into PyTorch. All right, we are going to go ahead and open part three in Colab, just so that I can run any of the code if I need to. And we're on Python, lists and dictionaries and JSON. So this is what a list or a tuple looks like in Python. A list is square brackets, and you put multiple items into there. And this can be a mix. The list itself or the tuple itself does not have a type. So you can put strings, numbers, other lists, other dictionaries into here, and we'll see dictionaries in a moment. The main difference between the tuples and the lists is the tuples, you can't change them afterwards. So here I can change the list and change that first or the the oneth, which is not the first, the start with zero. Zero index is the very, very beginning in Python. This is a big difference between programming languages and people don't have strong opinions about this one at all. But, just kidding, they do. But some languages start with one, some languages start with zero. I'm more used to languages that start with zero for, for some reason. So there you see that it has changed. You can also loop through these. So for s, n, l, print s, and it, it prints out all of these. So this will loop one by one through each of those. Now, what's unfortunate about this is you don't know what position you're at inside of the string. So you're just getting these one by one by one. You don't know if you're at position zero, one, two, three, or so on, but that's where enumerate is quite useful. You can simply put enumerate around it. So we're enumerating around L as, as opposed to directly up there. And we get I and L from each of these and we print out I colon L. And there you can see zero is where it starts at. One, two, three, it prints out the values. You tend to do this a lot. You'll create an empty, string and you will add items one by one. So we're adding A, B, C, and then a second C, and you can see this here. This is an important feature of lists. You can have duplicates in them. You'll see a set, which is really just making it that. Then you don't get the ability to have duplicates. That second C would have just been ignored. So you can print them out like here, that prints out the second one. And you can also insert. So you can have A, B, C, and then you can insert A, zero, and that puts A, zero at the beginning before. You can also remove values either by value or by index. Del C, zero means you wanna delete the zeroth one. Sets, like I briefly mentioned, Use curly braces to denote a set. You also use curly braces to denote a dictionary, but they look a little different, as you'll see. And here you're putting A, B, C into the set. You can also convert a list into a set, and you see it, you see it there. You can also manually add to the set A, B, C, C, and you notice the final C is gone. If you had put a second C into this one, it is going to give you the results and the, the C will be truncated. Now notice, the order is not the same that they came in because order is not guaranteed in a set. Since duplicates, it's more of a hash. They can, they can, they can take on really any, any order. The order is not defined. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I won't save it anyway, but nonetheless. Maps, which are really like dictionaries and hash tables in, uh, depends on a variety of languages. So I put in this curly braces, and then this is the key or the name, name value pairs. So name, that's like a field name, Jeff. Address is 123 main, which I made up. And then we can print out either the whole thing, which prints out the entire dictionary, or we can print out just my name. And we can even check and compare. So like if name is not in there, then we, we can say that it's undefined. Because if you try to access name, if you do this and there's no name, it's gonna throw, a, throw an exception. So you wanna check to see 
see if name is in there or you assign a default. So if you're trying to get some unknown key, some unknown name, and it doesn't exist, just put a second value in there with the get, and then it is going to return default. So you can also use get to get these. You can also use uh, square brace, which is essentially using indexing is what that's called. You can really combine these, and this is quite common. So you could do customers is a list, almost like a table, and then the individual records are these. So the first record is me and my wife's name, and then our pets are two birds that we have named Winton and Cricket. Poor Cricket has flown on to the afterlife, so I do need to remove, remove him. He was a good bird. And then Hickory, our dog, is still with us. Name John Smith, and whoever he is, I made him up, he has a pet named Rover. And then another one, John Doe. So you can see these can be quite ragged. Some people have a pets collection, some don't. And that's just how you set it up. And then you can print these out. It's kind of like a table. When we get into Python, Pandas, you can use these to convert into data frames, which are exactly like tables. You can also use something called zip. This combines two of these lists together. So one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So you're counting forward, you're counting backwards, and these are lists, so order is maintained. You can zip them, and that doesn't print too much. But if you convert the zip back to a list, now you, you get a collection of tuples inside of a list. So it's combining those two. One and five, that's the first in each. Two and four is the, is the next, and so on. This is where you more commonly use it. You'll loop through x comma y in zip a, b, and x and y each hold one of those two values from the two different lists. It's a great way to join up two lists, hence zip. And they can be ragged. If you only have three here and you have five here, it's going to truncate to the smaller of the two. So you only have three numbers here, you're going to have three in the resulting one, and four and five will simply ignore it. So one and five, one and five, two and four, two and four, three and three. Now why you might want the index coming along is say we're modifying this, and we want to loop over, and every value that is above 5, we want to clip to 5. So we're looping over. If x is greater than 5, then we can simply use the i, the index, from the enumeration to reassign it. You can also use comprehensions, which are pretty neat. This will create a list. The list is going to have 10 elements. So you've got an embedded for loop, and it's going to loop x from 1 to 10 and run this little part here on each one. So it's going to run it first with zero. So that's the zero. Then it's going to run it again with one. One times 10 is 10, and so on. It's a quick way to create a list based on some mathematical construct that is increasing through an index. You can do similar with dictionaries. I don't use this as much, but it has really come in handy a few times. That's the general form of it. A specific example is, I create kind of a reverse lookup here. I have text, column zero, column one, column two, column three, and I'm gonna create a lookup where I am going to get the value and the key for each of those, and that loops through each of them, and we're putting in the name and the value, so it's a lookup. So column zero, you could look it up by that string, and it tells you that's a zero, column one is one, and so on. And you can see I do a real quick lookup here. JSON is a very important concept in a lot of programming languages. It has become pretty much the de facto standard for a lot of data exchange, particularly if the data doesn't fit in a nice table. If it fits in a nice table, you want CSV, where you have clearly defined columns and rows. Here, I am creating essentially a dictionary because of the curly brace. All these keys, first name and then the actual value, John, and address, John has multiple addresses, and then address, John has just one address. We could put a, a square bracket in there and he could have multiple, but that's the street address, city, state, and zip code. He does have multiple phone numbers, so we put the square brace into here. And then the type, home, office, mobile, and then the actual number. So this is how you can keep a list of records in there. The JSON is nearly Python code. So you can take the JSON, just copy and paste it, assign it to a variable, and now you've, you've, you've got it. You can also take JSON strings and parse them, and now you can access the individual variables, like first and last, first, 
and last. So it'll say first name Jeff, last name Heaton, which is, which is me. You can also load JSON from a URL, which is quite common. So I am loading JSON from that URL, and here it is as a big long dictionary. That's the same JSON that we just looked at there, but we loaded it from a URL that I put it. I put that file up as a JSON on my GitHub repository. And then you can print out some of the values. Thank you for watching this video, and if you want to continue watching the other videos, please click subscribe and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click like. It helps the YouTube algorithm and gets the class noticed by more. Thank you very much.